All right, friends. We'll see who's joining with us tonight. There's Joni Bernhard. Welcome, my friend. How are you doing? Glad you're with us tonight, Joni. Good to see you in Southern Illinois. Headed your way on Sunday. Hello, Don Garrett. Pat Martin. Welcome back, buddy, from uh, Tappahammock. Hello, Bob and Miriam. Chris. Chris Kessler. Good to see you. There's Beverly Thomas. And Larry Sisson, the biggest Dallas Cowboy fan I know. How awesome is that? Dan and Becky, welcome. I've missed you, Dan and Becky. I miss seeing you. Pat Martin, good to see you, my friend. Please tell your lovely wife I said hello. Hey, Royda, Ryda, Ryda, Ryda. I got your name right that time. And there's Larry Page. Good to see you, bud. Welcome, my friend. Good to see you. I'm going to see if how long I can stay out here tonight. It's uh, it's mosquitoes are starting to get me and the and the cicadas. Anybody seeing cicadas? I've got some cicadas coming out. I don't know how many we're going to be. Hey, there's uh, Joan and Morgan. Nice to see you. Hello, Linda and Ed Savakul. Welcome, my friends. Yeah, Beverly, haven't talked to you in a while. Not since I uh, had a little interest, interest incident today. So, hey, no big deal. Let's not say anything else about that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's see who else is with us tonight. Glad to see everybody joining with us. I know we've got 10 people in the room right now, and we will see who else takes a moment to log in and check in. Now we've got 13 folks who are saying hi and wanting to. There's Peggy and Tom from Manassas Baptist Church in North Carolina. Welcome. Good to see you guys. Welcome. Good to see you. I've got my dog outside with me tonight. I've got him on a leash. He's hooked up to the uh, my my truck, so he can't get too far. The earlier days, he uh, earlier this week, he went off running after a deer, and uh, my gosh, that thing ran through the woods, and I thought he was gone. But anyway, Terry Kessler, good to see you. Your son Chris is here, so glad to see the Kesslers with us today. Linda Hagerman, I missed you on Sunday, Linda. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you, Linda. Oh. I forgot my glasses. I need my regular glasses. I knew I was having trouble reading this stuff. Let me go change my glasses. I'll be right back. I, these are my computer glasses. Now I can see who's here today. Joni, Linda, now I, hey, I can actually see you guys now, so glad to see you. Did you guys hear my dog yarking when I was going in the house to change my glasses? He did not like me leaving him out here. Jody, you want to jump up here with me? Come here. There's Jody. You want to say hi? Yes, there we are. The Jeopardy theme. Doo -doo 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 -doo. No, that's Twilight Zone. So, Walter, man, Walter, I loved your pictures from California. I love Southern California, one of my favorite places. He, I love La Jolla. That's a neat spot. I have a friend who lives out in La Jolla. And so, hey, Marge Danner, good to see you, friend. Good to see you. Let's see here. Other people want to stop in and say hello? Gay Morris from West Frankfort, Illinois. We've got two people from West Frankfort. Good to see Gay Morris with us. Ryda. Okay, I'm glad to hear that about George. Well, as we're checking in, thank you, Ryda. She's getting us started. If you have some prayer requests, you can, uh, you can share those with us. Post those if you would like. Let us know about some things going on. Hey, Megan. Nice to see Megan with us today. Good to see Megan. Tell my buddy Kenny I said hello. Yeah, y Yachty, I've missed Yachty for a couple of days. He stayed with Anna Gonzalez, and uh, so he... He's just, he, he doesn't want to get away too far away from me right now. So he's going to sit in my lap. Hey, Pat Gatewood. Welcome, my friend. Tell Johnny I said hello. Gay Morris, so nice to see you. Gay, I'm headed back to West Frankfurt this weekend for my uncle's funeral. So I don't know if I'll see you, but I'll be coming through and, and uh, running through West Frankfurt really quick. So it'd be nice to see you. Oh, wow. Tia Hall. That's 25 days. That's a long... She is a long haul person with uh, the uh, with COVID, so that's that's some seriously stuff. And so, yeah, La Jolla has got a lot of steps, and so that's a big good spot, though. Hey, Kenny, good to see you, bud. 
Hello, Johnny and Pat. Nice to see you guys from Tappahammock. And so good to see you, friends. Other prayer, other prayer things we need to remember. Uh, Megan, we I talked to Kenny about his father-in-law. Any changes in his stepfather? Excuse me. Scott Skinner from West Frankfurt. Hello, buddy. How is your son Augie doing? I haven't heard from you, and and I was just curious to know uh, how Augie's doing. My friend Scott is with us. His son. Uh, broke his broke his back last year in a motorcycle accident and he was paralyzed and so Scott tell us how how he's hey Armand welcome bud and Suzanne Moore in Southern California Suzanne I was a little jealous you got to see the Cardinals play this week so that's kind of exciting I, I in, and in sunny San Diego as well oh Walter you could have met Suzanne she lives down near where you guys were visiting in uh, in Southern California what are some other prayer things oh Harvey Wiggins we'll pray for your friend Harvey all right. Hey, Don Garrett, I'm glad that Veronica and I just got back from Nashville and none of your co-workers stopped me on Interstate 81 or 66 or 40. I made it all the way back and forth at driving a little bit above speed limit and I didn't get a single ticket, so I was happy about that. So thanks, Don. Uh, other prayer requests, other prayer things we need to remember. Um, I'm going to, he is home now. Okay, very good. That's good stuff. Stephanie Vale, glad to have you with us. Stephanie, you did a beautiful job with your father's service. My goodness, you are a gifted speaker. I was very impressed, very impressed. But Don, I, 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 don't, don't worry too much. I was pulling a trailer so I couldn't speed a whole lot. So Yachty's with me today, Susan. There's Yachty. He's looking for a deer, so he's paying attention off to my left. But uh, anyway. My job is kind of strange. Uh, today, I went. Uh, I was driving into Manassas to do a couple different things after we got back, and a friend called me, and she was so, so, so excited. Um, Senator Warner called her and wants to come to her office and, and do a presentation for some different things, and it's kind of exciting. I can't go into any details. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a surprise, and so excited about that, and she was excited and just going on and on and on and on. And five minutes later, not even five minutes later, a good friend of mine called me and sent me a text, a long text, and, and looks like she, she might have malignant breast cancer. And, um, and it, it, it just, you just go from the joy and excitement of, of one person's great news to hearing another person that you care deeply about having some very, very traumatizing news. So to celebrate with one and then also to pray and be worried about another, I just, I won't use any names on either case because both of them are very private right now. So anyway, all right, Joni, um, we will pray for your church there. That's a big, that's a big, big situation. First Baptist Church, West Frankfurt. And so that's a big, big thing. So we will pray there. Lisette, my favorite back row Baptist, who's bringing her sister and brother-in-law and nephew. Lisette, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this tonight. All right. Other prayer things? Other prayer things? Hello, my friend Lisette. Um, if we don't have any prayer requests, what are some things we're thankful for? What are we thankful for tonight? Eva, I am thankful for Eva. Everybody who is thankful for Eva, just write, I am. Just say, I am thankful for Eva. You don't have to write thankful for Eva, but if you're thankful for Eva, just write, I am, because I am thankful that Eva's here. Aish, Terry, we'll pray for your friends. We will pray for your friends. Walter, that's right. I'm thankful for Walter, too. Look at that, Eva. Everybody's grateful for you. Everybody loves Eva. Everybody loves... We should make a sitcom called Everybody Loves Eva. I think people would love that show. We could make... We could probably pay off our church debt if we made a sitcom about I. Everybody Loves Eva. I think that's... Look, Eva. See? Look at this. Hey, Nancy and Ronnie Step, Welcome. Eva, you got to feel the love. And you know what Eva's going to do? She's going to call me and she's going to say, David, why do you do that? <laughs> oh, there it is. I knew it. I knew it. And there she is. There she is saying that. That's all right, Eva, because you're awesome. That's why. You're awesome and you're fun. That's, oh, that's good. I'm glad they made you move up to the front. That's good. Very cool. Look at this, Eva. Everybody loves you. Other things we are thankful? Yes, you were. Uh, that was a good celebration for your dad's life on Saturday. Other things we're thankful for? Anything else? I'm thankful Walter's back. I've missed Walter and his wife on Wednesday nights. They've been busy with kiddos and life and all those things. So uh, 
So it's good to have Walter back with us today, and I'm glad they had a good trip out to California and, and see their sister, his sister-in-law graduate. That's a good thing. What else are we thankful for? Other things we're thankful for? Anything else? Hey, I'm thankful for family and health. That's right. And I'm thankful Joni's a grandma. Joni's a grandma three times, so that's exciting. 80 women coming to the team. Uh, Becky, that's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. There is no why not. Glenda, that's good. Yes, I was very thankful for Lauren's safe arrival and our return. That's exactly right. So those of you who may or may not know, Lauren was dropped off at uh, Vanderbilt University on this weekend. And we got her set up in her apartment. And uh, her apartment is about the size of the back of my truck. It's very small. And so so she is, uh, that's, uh, yeah, Beverly, that's a good one right there. Our, our best memory hasn't happened yet, but your, that memory's coming a long time from now. What else? Uh, Lauren got settled into uh, got settled into Vandy. That was kind of exciting. Hello, Erlene Morgan. Welcome, my friend. Please tell your husband Kenny I said hello. Good to see you guys. Uh, uh, me too, Don Garrett. I'm very thankful to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's starting to starting to show its its face right around now. That's a good thing. Joe Commodores. That's exactly right. You know. You Let's see, Nadilski's. Hey, Linda Nadilski. Linda Nadilski sent us some delicious cookies to help. You know, it's a long way to Nashville, Tennessee. It was like 12 hours or 13 hours. I ate a lot of cookies on that drive, so that was big. And so uh, thank you, Linda Nadilski. I wish we had packed one of Linda's pizzas because Linda's pizzas are awfully good. So, uh, so anyway, I did have some good food while I was in Nashville. This is, you know, that ADD kicking in again. Uh, Veronica and Lauren and I went to a restaurant called The Broken Egg, and we had, uh, I had a Cajun omelet. It was, um, it had a remoulade sauce, and then it had this andouille sausage, and then it had uh, crawdads in it, and it had shrimp in an omelet, and it was amazing. Sounds kind of gross, but it was amazing. Highly recommend it. Hey, Charles Savas, good to see you, and there's Natalie Smith. Welcome. Oh, all right. Scotty, thank you for telling us about Scotty. Well, I'm Scotty. I'm glad. I'm glad he's doing better. That's good. That's good news. So we'll hope and pray that Augie continues to, to heal and recover there. Any other things we want to share a prayer of thanksgiving for, or or uh, just things we're thankful for before we before we take off and get started? Anything else? It's kind of nice. Scott Skinner is a young man that I grew up with in uh, West West Frankfurt. So we've got about a. About four or five people from West Frankfurt in here right now, so that's kind of kind of nice. And so, Scotty, good to have you with us for a few moments, anyway. All right. Well, the broken egg that was pretty amazing, and we sat through, had to wait for about thirty minutes, Linda, but it was it was well worth the wait. Hey, Sherry Derby, good to see you. Welcome. Hey, Mark, welcome to you and your father. Good to have you guys with us. Good to have you folks with us tonight. I'm thankful you're with us too, Rida, and I'm thankful I'm finally calling your name right because I'm really embarrassed that I've called your name wrong for five years. But hey, who's counting besides me and you? So, hey, I've got it right now. And I think Beck Becky tried to get me straight a few times, but I'm a slow learner. Anything else? Any other things we're thankful for? Anything else? Any other prayer requests? Well, guys, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we will uh, we will welcome Dr. Gower and his lovely wife, Gwen, and... Uh, Yes, that's that's exactly right. We're thankful for Ando doing well after his surgery. That's quite scary. Last week, uh, Megan, he had, she and her husband and myself, we have a friend. His name is Ando. He went to the doctor two weeks ago on Friday, and the doctor told him he had cancer. Doctor wanted to do surgery that day, and when you hear a doctor want to do that, that's frightening. He ended up having surgery the next week, and everything is um, everything is going well. They were able to remove all the they hope they were able to remove every, all the cancerous tissue and um, think they were able to address it pretty quickly. So, so scary, and we're thankful in the same breath. So you're exactly right, Megan. That's a scary deal. All right. Well, guys, join me as we go to the Lord in prayer, and we will get started. Lord, we're thankful to be together uh, online, virtually. We're thankful for a handful of people joining from West Frankfurt, for Scotty being with us tonight, and we continue to thank you for his son's health and his recovery, and we pray, God, you continue to help little August to, just to continue to, to heal and, to, and just to recover and respond to all the treatment that he's got. We are grateful, Father God, for the blessings of life that you give us, for grandchildren, for health, for life, for, 
the sports season that we're enjoying right now, whether it's baseball or golf or tennis or whatever it might be outside, we're grateful, God, just to enjoy the beauty of life. Father, we are also thankful, as Don mentioned, just to see that uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel in this COVID mess, at least in our country. And we pray, God, that we would continue to see um, see good things in regard to that. And we pray, Father, that uh, you would help our, our country to get back to some semblance of normalcy in, in, in the near future. We pray for our students who are graduating, for our students who are still struggling with online learning and just the challenges that that presents, and just ask God that you would give grace to our teachers. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the joy you give us. Thank you for Eva, who's with us tonight that we all love and we miss in Indianapolis, but we're grateful she joins us online. And thank you for everybody else that's here with us now. We're grateful for the, the joy that we have as we come together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, um, we're going to conclude our Bible study in the book of First Thessalonians, and, and tonight we're going to wrap it up with uh, the verse night, starting with verse 19, and that's going to be where we're going to take off from and, uh, and kind of address that. But before I do that, I do want to talk about some COVID stuff for Manassas Baptist Church. Um, I, I, I've, as you know, I left town Saturday after Pete Slusher's funeral, and I have not had a chance to meet with the elders, and the governor issued... Um, some new reports, if you will, about what is required for, for COVID now. And, and uh, we've got a lot more change, got some number of changes happening on, at the end of this month. And so I'm hoping to be able to send an email out to the church tomorrow or Friday uh, addressing what expectations are. At this point, I'm going to still say we have to have our masks, but, but that might change tomorrow. I, I just don't know. I've got to get a word from the elders before I, before I, I make uh, any major changes in, in that regard. I've been vaccinated, and what they're saying is if, you, if you've been vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask uh, indoors, and so that's something we're looking forward to. Um, as, and as, as of May 30th, I believe, they, they're doing away with the social distancing restrictions. Um, so you're recommended, but you're not re required to have the social distancing restrictions. Um, so we're looking at that. One thing they are saying is that for persons who work with children, um, for children's ministry, they are going to say they want you to continue to wear your mask if you're working with kids. And uh, so that's that's one thing we're working working out. So I don't know if I'll have, it, have an email ready for you tomorrow in reference to what's happening with our church stuff. But uh, I hope to have something for the church really soon. I, for one, am very ready to, to stop wearing those masks. But I will, we will do what, uh, do what we're, we're supposed to do to the best of our ability. Uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, they're not wearing masks at all. Uh, very, very few uh, people wearing masks. You drive back to Virginia, and the, you, see, you see a lot more masks being worn here in Virginia. So it's really interesting to see how the different, different take is on that. So, anywho. Rida, I do not have any dad jokes today. We drove in this afternoon, and uh, I did not have a chance to do any dad jokes. I know you're upset, but I think everybody else might be saying, thank God we're tired of those dad jokes. So, so hey, hey, there's Michael Chase from Hong Kong. Welcome, Michael Chase. I'm glad you are here with us. And Todd Smith, welcome to you, too. If you guys ever need a really good photographer, Todd Smith is a great photographer. And uh, if you, yeah, he's just a good photographer. He does a lot of really good work. So, all right, guys, this is what the Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians. When Paul concludes this letter, you almost get the sense that he is trying to cram a lot of information into these last few sentences. And so, I, thank you, Walter. I'm glad you and Ryder like my dad jokes because I'm worried that not everybody likes my dad jokes. So, sorry, I don't have any tonight, but I appreciate it. So here, here's the last thing that Paul says to the church at Thessalonica. Listen to this. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. Don't treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Very cool. So that's the message that we see. And when we're looking at this final piece of the church at Thessalonica, that the letter to the church at Thessalonica, we see this message of what he's trying to say, of kind of cramming in what it looks like to live that full and abundant life of walking in Christ. And we see five things that I think are important for us to, to kind of focus in on. And I'm going to be asking some some questions here. And, and tonight's questions are going to be a little bit tougher and going to be a little bit more... Um, you're, you're all you're going to be 
gonna be right in here. So here, check this out. The first thing it says is don't quench the Spirit's fire. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. And I want you to think about what, what you're talking about here. And what it's saying, I think, is that there's this sense in our lives, in your life and in mine, where we have a sense of doing what is right. And we also have a sense that when we're doing something wrong, we know we should stop it. And so what the thing that Paul's saying, what the Bible's teaching is, is that when you sense God's spirit leading you to do something, and my friends, there's Don Davidson. I'm so happy to have you with us. Don Davidson is a pastor at First Baptist Church Alexandria. And so, Don, so nice to have you with us for a few moments, buddy. I'm glad you're here. If, if I have uh, too many heroes in the ministry, Don Davidson is definitely one of them. When I grow up, I want to be, be, like, be like Don. So he's a good guy. So, Don, glad to have you with us. So what Paul's saying... He's saying, don't put out the Spirit's fire. And for us, in my understanding of what this might look like, is this idea that when we sense God's Spirit saying, do this or don't do that, we need not stop that. We need to very clearly respond in that capacity. I think everybody watching, everybody who's a follower of Christ in this group, in this room right now, We've had a sense where we thought we felt God leading us to do something. And my guess is every one of us have had an experience where we felt like we sensed God saying, don't do that, stop. And in many cases, we've done it. And maybe some other cases, we've not done it. And we can understand what that is. So one of the things we have to determine is, how do we know if that's our inclination, our will, our mindset, trying to lead that. You're driving by Chick-fil-A tonight after Bible study. You're driving by Chick-fil-A tomorrow, whenever. And you suddenly feel this urge to go get one of those delicious ice dream ice cones. And you just feel this urge calling you to gill weight in that line. And that line's going to be long, but you know it's going to go fast. And they've got the best chocolate milkshakes. Maybe you want a peach milkshake. Is it the Holy Spirit calling you in there, or maybe is that your will calling you? That's a tough one. I'm telling you, they didn't teach us that in seminary, but that's a tough one. I think maybe when we try to understand when it's God's will calling us to do whatever it might be, one of the tests to see if we really understand if it's God's will or not is maybe if it's an unselfish, oh, a fox just ran by my house. Holy cow. All right. Red fox. Go by. All right. See, ADD kicked in right there. I got to see that. If I was quicker, I'd have turned the camera around, and you could have seen it too. Oh, well. All right. You know, it's really hard, Don Davidson, to go from a theological point to seeing a red fox, and now my dog wants to chase the fox. Come here, dog. Come here. Come here. He's back. So he's looking at the fox too. So how do we, how do, we do this? How do we know if it's God's will or if it's our will? Well, one of the things about understanding what God's will might be is this idea is what he's is he asking you to do something um, unselfish or is it something that's kind of going to feed who you are and maybe if it's an unselfish act maybe that could be God's spirit leading you to do something for example you might have felt inclined to say you know I need to write such and such a letter I need to give such and such a call I need to take dinner to this family I need to invite this couple out. That, that could be a good thing. And, and then the reality is, that could be God's Spirit whispering in your ear to build a relationship, to build a bridge, to, to do something to extend grace and mercy to a family that's going through a difficult spot. And so if you sense a leading to love, don't hold back. If you sense a leading to write a note or a text or make a call, don't stop it. Just, just do it. If you sense an opportunity to be an encourager to a teacher, to a neighbor, to a friend. Don't say, oh, that's just going to be weird. Do it. Do it. Now, Veronica and I have were in, in Nashville this week, and we were taking care of Lauren, and we left a restaurant, and when we were walking out of this restaurant, we got approached by a beggar. And this person approached us and asked very quickly that they needed money. And I need you to understand, I rarely, 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 rarely if ever, will give money to a person on the street. I, 
Uh, Mike Clements told me very clearly, Mike Clements was a minister in our church who worked with the homeless. He said, never give money, never give cash to a person begging. Just don't because it's not going to be helpful to them. And so this person asked me for money and they said they needed food. And I said, I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. And I turned away and now I had in my hands a box of food. I literally had a box of food. And as I'm walking away, I immediately said, oh my gosh, I've got food. And I turned around and I caught this person. I said, hey, you can have this food. And they yelled at me. They said, we don't want your food. And I went, oh, okay. Well, you know, it's one of those situations you just kind of kind of scratch your head and say, that's interesting. And so you kind of roll with that. This morning, Veronica and I stopped at a Cracker Barrel. Have you guys ever counted how many Cracker Barrels are on Interstate 81 and Interstate 40? There's like 12,318. There's a lot of Cracker Barrels. Well, we stopped at a Cracker Barrel for breakfast this morning in Roanoke. Natalie Klein, I'm sorry I didn't call you while I was in Roanoke. But we stopped in Roanoke and had breakfast. And while we were sitting there, I watched an older gentleman walk in with an older lady. And they were moving so, so slow. I mean, they were moving so slow. And they took the seat right behind Veronica. Hey, Dave Wilmore. Good to see you, bud. And they sat down, and he pulled the chair out, scooted her in. He sat down. Waitress came by, took the order, did everything they needed to do, fixed her tea, did everything he needed to do. He was kind of an older guy. She was a much older person. I, could, I, I didn't think it was husband and wife, but I didn't know. I kind of thought it, was, it was, might have been mother and son or maybe a nephew. Or I, I just didn't know the relationship. When he had to step up to go to the, go do something, I, I watched her out of the corner of my eye, and she just kind of sat there. And when she came back, he came back, you could see the smile on her face. You could see all this, all these relations going on. When their food came, I watched him cut her food, and I watched him cut it into all these tiny little pieces, and she just watched him, and you just saw this glow on her face as she was watching this guy. And I mean, I'm just kind of paying attention, and she's just eating so slow, and he's just paying attention to her. It was, it was really a neat thing. Well, I kind of felt like I needed to say something, and I, and you know me, I, I just went over there and I just said, I hate to bother you, but is this, is this your mother? And he looked at me and he says, well, yes, it is. And I said, well, I just want you to know something. I've watched you take care of your mother, and it did my heart good to show you, to see you, how you have loved her and cared for her. And I just want to say, I miss my mom, and I wish I could do this for my mom, and you're doing a great job as her son. Now, I didn't know what he was going to say. I had no idea what he was saying. But I looked at his mom, and this little old lady got the biggest, broadest smile, and you could just see the joy on her face in that moment. It was priceless. It was just a beautiful, beautiful moment. And I, I got to tell you, I was thinking about my mom, and I had a couple tears in my eyes, so I just took off, and I said, I'm out of here. And that, and that was that. So here's my question for you. Here's my question. When have you sensed God whispering in your ear to do something like this, and you did it? When have you sensed God whispering in your ear to do something like this, and you did it? I know that might be a lot, but if you could write down just a little bit of maybe when it happened, maybe a little bit of where it was, maybe just whatever you can. I, I, I would love to see if you have anything like that. When have you experienced something like that where you sense the Spirit leading you to step out of your comfort zone and you did it? Can you tell me something like that? I'm going to wait just a few moments. That's a big question. So I, I know that's a lot. So if, if that makes it hard for people to talk about, I got you. I won't wait too long, but I just want you to think about that. When have you sensed the Spirit leading you out of your comfort zone? Anybody? Let's see. I don't have anybody responding. The last response I have is Natalie Klein next time. Oh, Linda, Linda Dodilski, and you do write them well, and you write them to me, and I am grateful, and I appreciate. I've got a, I've got a, a page and a half email that Linda wrote me that I'm going to share in one of my sermons about this someday. It's pretty cool. Taking care of your grandma, very good. I like that writing. What else? Any others? Any other responses? And Linda, by the way, the one I liked the most in your recent email was with your neighbor and how you guys sensed the just going to build a bridge there. There you go. I like that, Terry. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, Walter, that's encouraging. 
Are they making any comments about my hairline? Did they say anything about that? That's, I, no, let's not go there. I'm reading, I'm trying to read yours, Susanna. These are going so fast. I'm going to have to go and come back and read these. But okay, very cool. What else? Beverly, I like that. Susanna, I like yours. Glenna, that's a good word, Glenna. Other things, other responses? You guys are writing some good stuff there. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't read it fast enough, so that's good. So here's, you write, some, write them down when you have sensed the Spirit whispering in your ear to do this. But the second thing that, that he talks about in this text that I think is kind of important, it says, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Don't treat prophecies with contempt. Now, when you think about that and hear that word prophecies, a lot of times we think of, of that in the idea that that's telling the future. That's something from Nostradamus, or that's some prophetic individual who can see the future. That's not what this is talking about. In the New Testament, when we see the word prophecy, you have to understand this is more about preaching. This is more about foretelling. This is more about what F.F. F. Bruce, a great theologian, said, declaring the mind of God in the power of the Spirit and preaching God's Word and sharing God's Word and talking about God's Word. And so this is the idea of listening, hearing, reading, understanding what God's Word is saying to us, whether it's from the Bible, from a sermon, from a book, a podcast, a conversation. It may be the idea of just having a, a, a conversation with somebody and you sense or you understand what God is leading you to do. And when it says don't hold it with contempt, that means don't ignore it. Don't put it aside. Don't, don't do something against it. But listen to what the Spirit might be whispering in your ear and actually engage with it. And so like tonight, you might hear something that you need, to, you need to put into practice. And so this text would say, don't ignore that. Deal with it. If it's encouraging, if it's praying, if it's studying the Word, if it's being kind, if it's forgiving, if it's whatever it might be, that might be a, a step. Hey, that might be something that we need, to, we need to look at and consider when it says, don't treat God's... Hey, my dog is... He cannot bark at me while I'm trying to talk out here. He's treating my prophecy with contempt by barking right now. Be good, boy. Don't do that. And so we're seeing this message, and I think it's one of the things that we have to hear that, you know, when, we're, when we listen to somebody preach or we read a book or we hear having a good conversation, sometimes those messages might call us to repent. They might call us to be generous. They might call us to, to reach out and forgive. They might call us to, to step up, to be generous. They might call us to serve. It might call us to do a thousand different things. But when we sense and understand what God is trying to say to us, listen and engage with that. I mean, think about it. How many things in your life, in the books that you've read or the sermons you've heard or the conversations you've had, that you have changed and gone in a different direction? It's kind of important. And so Don Garrett, your dog is barking back. Jody, I don't know what Jody is seeing right now, but he sees something, and he is, um, he's irritated. He's growling. There he is. Oh, you know what he's seeing? Those of you who don't live in northern Virginia, um, we have cicadas coming out right now. You can't hear them right yet, but I've got all these cicadas going across my driveway, and uh, I would show you how many, but anyway, you don't want to see, see cicadas. They're kind of gross. So anyway, third thing, third thing. The Bible says in verse 21, is test everything. This gets, this gets important when it says this about testing everything. Now, we, we think about this piece about testing things, and we kind of wonder, why, why in the world is this important? Well, if you pay any attention at all, there are all kinds of speakers that you can listen to on television, that you can find online, or churches that you could go to, or individuals that you could engage with in a thousand different ways. And you have to ask yourself the question, which one is right? Which one do you need to listen to? Which one is worth your time, your energy, your, your effort in, in doing, those, doing those things? And I, and I want you to hear this. The Bible says that we need to test those things that we're engaged with. We need to pay attention to them. And I heard one person say that there are five ways you can test things. There's the, there's the Jesus test. And this is kind of a big deal. Very clear, clearly, ask, is this person, is, is this person Jesus-centered? Is Jesus Lord of Lords? Is Jesus the King? Is Jesus central to who they are and what they're, what they're preaching about? And if that person does not pass the Jesus test, that's a person you might, might want to check out 
and determine if you want to listen to them or not. That's a pretty big deal. I'll never forget, there's a family that started attending our church at Manassas. Her name was T.J. Williams. I can't remember her husband's name. I think it might be Cameron. I don't remember. And um, at any rate, I'm starting to get mad at Java, so I'm going to have to test Java. All right, Yachty, golly. And she told me when she came to our church and she heard me preach, she said to me, she said, I didn't know preachers talked about Jesus anymore. I was kind of stunned by that. And I asked her, I said, what do you mean by that? And she said to me, she said they'd been visiting a number of different churches, and she said, we just didn't hear the name of Jesus mentioned anymore. And I thought, how does that happen? There's a church consultant out in Seattle, and I, I've forgotten his name. And one of the things that he says to pastors in his conferences, he said, Pastor, if Jesus isn't the hero of your sermon, then stop speaking. Stop speaking. So one of the tests that's kind of important is this Jesus test. Second test is the scripture test. And the scripture test is kind of important because if what somebody says isn't found anywhere else in the Bible, you might need to be careful with listening to what they have to say. And when you think about that, you think, well, David, isn't everything you say based on the Bible? I would like to think it is. But there are some folks who sometimes it's kind of strange. This week I heard about a pastor in Oklahoma who's teaching that, um, that followers of Christ have an angel doppelganger, an angel double, d replica of us in other parts of the world. And I'm like, what? That's just the craziest thing I've ever heard. And this fellow went on and on elaborating on this. And I'm like, that's nuts. And people are listening to this and people are buying your books and people are supporting this. Well, that's the second test, the Jesus test, the scripture test. Does it line up with the Bible? The third test, is it about grace? Is it about mercy? Is it about what Jesus said about love? And if it doesn't pass that test, you might need to want to, you might want to check that out. Fourth test is the character test. Jesus addressed this in Matthew chapter 7, addressing the, the idea of uh, by your fruits, by our fruits, people will know what we're doing is good or not. Do our lives match up to the message that we're trying to, to address? And so this character test is kind of a big deal as well. And the final test is edification. Is what's being taught building people up? Is it encouraging people? Is it providing support? Is it providing encouragement? Is it providing hope? Or is it tearing down? And friends, right now we live in an era where there's a lot of people who just want to tear other people down. I don't think you're going to hear me ever put down other preachers. You might hear me disagree with a doctrine. You might hear me disagree with a, an ideology or things of that nature. But I'm, I'm not going to go after preachers. I'm, ju I'm just not. I mean, it's not, just not my style. I might disagree with something they say, but I'm, I'm not going to make a big deal of that. You know why? Because it doesn't edify the body. It just doesn't. And it's not healthy. So we think about how do you test these things? You test them by by the Jesus test, by the scripture test, by the grace test, by the character test, and by the edification test. Why do you test? Because the Bible goes on to say, and it says this message, test everything and hold on to what is good. Hold on to what is good. You test it so that you can build your life on the good stuff. You build your life on the good stuff. A friend of mine, who got some very devastating news last week. She's in this room right now, and she just commented with something we talked about three weeks ago on our Wednesday night Bible study. Her best memory hasn't happened yet. That is holding on to the good in light of the bad. That is holding on to the good in light of the pain and the other stuff that's going on. Last thing. When we look at this, pi this picture about testing, we're not testing to be critical. We're not testing to be ugly. We're not testing to be difficult. We're testing to find out if we can trust. We live in an era that many people call an age of rage. We find things that we disagree with somebody, and instead of having conversations, we immediately attack. We immediately go to, go to war. And it's just, it's just unfortunate. 
We see that in politics. We see that in business. We see that in neighborhoods. We see that in churches. And it's, it's sad. It is just sad. So when I say this, excuse me, when the Bible says to test everything, it's not test to prove that you're smarter, you're better, you're more intelligent or whatever. It's to test so that you can find out what is right and build what's on right. Fourth thing that Paul says, he says, avoid almost every kind of evil. No, it doesn't say that. It says avoid evil. No, it says avoid every. And it says avoid every kind of evil. There is a situation that sometimes we think in ourselves that we can get into the ring and kind of box with evil. We can get into the ring and maybe flirt with whatever our addiction might be, whether it's alcohol or substance or if it's something on the internet or gambling or maybe our temper or maybe whatever, whatever, whatever yours is, that we think we can flirt with this in kind of a way that we can, we can win. Well, the reality is you're not going to win. Don't even get in the ring with it. The Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion. Do you want to get into the ring with a roaring lion? No. No, you don't. I've got my dog on a leash so he doesn't chase the foxes that just ran by there because that dog is going to lose a fight with the fox. If you and I get into the ring with a roaring lion, we're going to get beat. The Bible says in 2 Timothy that we need to flee from the, the evil desires of youth. There are certain things that we just need to avoid that we don't need to engage. Situations, places, conversations, people, websites, whatever, whatever, whatever. The picture that we have in this message is that there are certain things that we've got to just get through. Ryda, you take care, and I'm glad you're with us tonight. So that's kind of a big deal. And the final thing that Paul said in this text is a prayer. And listen to what this prayer says in verse 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And so Paul writes this, wraps this up by saying, God is faithful, and he is going to do this in your life. He's going to sanctify you. He's going to help you grow. He's going to be the one that changes you. He's going to be the one that helps you become generous. He's going to be the one that helps you engage. He's going to be the one that helps you when your dog is growling at you. Don't, he doesn't know what. Johnny, stop it. He's going to be the one that's going to help us and do it in us. He will do it. I don't know what the struggle is. I don't know what the hurt is. I don't know what the hang-up is. I don't know what the growth area is. I don't know what area of life you need to make some changes in. But Paul said, he will do it. He will do it. He will do it in you. He will do it. As Beverly Thomas just wrote, God's got this. He will do it. And he will see you through it. Paul concluded this letter to the church at Thessalonica. He wrote, brothers, pray for us. Isn't this interesting that Paul said to this church at Thessalonica that he helped found, that he led to Christ, that he was uh, discipling, that he was helping do it that he was going, all the things that he was doing in this congregation. And then he says to them, pray for me. Paul said, I need you. I need your help. I need your support. I need your encouragement. I need, I need you to intercede on my behalf before the Father. He will do it. And thank you, ladies. I appreciate that, Natalie, and I appreciate that, Linda. He will do it. But the picture is in this final statement that Paul's saying to the church of Thessalonica that he needs them. He needs this community of faith. And, you know, it's one of those pictures that uh, we think about in our faith story in, in, in our congregation. We need each other. It's not a, a one-way street where I'm just talking to you and I'm just sharing with you and I'm pouring out, I'm pouring out, pouring out. Man, we need each other. I received a beautiful letter of encouragement today from, uh, from Don and Edna Garrett down in Florida. Thank you, Don and Edna. I got that today. I appreciated that. Received another letter of encouragement from uh, Wayne and Amy Stillwell. Thank you, Wayne and Amy. That was very encouraging. And, you know, we need each other in this journey. And Paul said very clearly to do this. He goes on the next st statement. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I, you know, I, I don't think we do that in our church. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure we don't. Um, that's one of those things that we don't do anymore. Maybe the better thing to say is greet one another with a holy handshake. Maybe greet one another with a big, big hug. Linda, Linda Hagerman, she's a big hugger, and, and COVID has been terrible for Linda. And so we need to give a, a holy hug. You guys, this is a funny one. 
uh, in Mexico, one of the things that we do to greet one another is um, the women greet one another with a kiss, and the men greet the women with a kiss, but men don't greet men with a kiss. And when I first started going down to uh, see Veronica, Veronica had an uncle who was a uh, he was a general. I think he was a general. I'm pretty sure he's a general in the Mexican army. He was in charge of the president of Mexico's uh, travels while he was in the country. And um, and one day he came in the house and I gave him a kiss. And he looked at me and says, I don't think you're supposed to do that. And so that was kind of embarrassing. He was the last guy I kissed in Mexico, so I'm not doing that no more. But uh, but at any rate, you know, this picture about greet one another with holy kiss, that might be interpreted with a handshake or maybe a fist bump or maybe a hug or whatever it might be. That kissing business gets you in trouble. And he says this finally in verse 27. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. Make certain everybody hears this message. Share this story. Let this message go out. Get this message out. And the final thing he says is the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Grace be with you. And so I'm going to close with that by saying grace be with you tonight. Thank you for being with us. I'm grateful to have everybody here and uh, to be a part of this Bible study as we as we break the bread of life together, and we remember uh, we remember this this encouraging word. And so that's kind of an important important message. So so that that is that. Glad to have you with us tonight, and uh, good to see you, Mark from uh, Muskogee. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Walter. Hey, there's two, uh, Walter. 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 Go Yankees. I hear you, but anyway. Friends, nice to have you with us. I'm glad you're joining with us tonight. Um, next week, I'll be flying in from uh, Illinois on Wednesday. And um, thank you, Peggy and Tom. Thank you, Nancy and Ronnie. Good to see you, friends. Thank you, Becky. Now get to choir. Don't, don't get a speeding ticket. Thank you, Miss Terry. Good to have you with us. Linda and Jerry, good to see you, friends. Thank you for joining with us. Appreciate it from our North Carolina Manassas Baptist Church. And Suzanne, my goodness, it's early out in Southern California. Linda, good to see you. Kind of an exciting thing next week. Um, Lauren, that's right, my arms are going to be tired, very tired next week. I'll be flying back at about 4 o'clock, I think. But uh, anyway. Ah, that's all right, early. Well, how are you riding right now? Don't write right now. Get home safe and sound. That's good. We have a we have a state police officer in this Bible study. He won't be happy if you're writing that while we're watching, while you're driving. Just kidding. He's retired and he's in Florida, so he's a long way away from Northern Virginia. Don Garrett, thanks for being with us. Good to see you guys. You guys are a blessing to me every Wednesday night. I do find a lot of encouragement when I do this. Joan Squires, I miss you. I miss my buddy Morgan, and I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys get back to church soon. I want to see her. Hey, Todd, thanks for being with us, buddy. I'm glad you stuck around. Glad you had had your time with us. I'm going to log off. You guys have a great night. Thanks for checking in with us, and have a good evening, and I'll see you soon.